The San Diego Padres came into this season loaded with superstar talent, and expectations weren't just to win the NL West, but to go after a World Series. With an offense led by last season's NL MVP runner-up Manny Machado, young stars in Fernando Tatis Jr. and Juan Soto, and their big free agent signing Xander Bogarts, as well as a pitching staff with former Cy Young winner Blake Snell, all-star pitchers Hugh Darvish and Joe Musgrove, and closer Josh Hader, this team should have been near the top of MLB. But this season has been a huge disappointment for the Padres, and through August 29th, they haven't even been a winning team. With a 62 and 71 record, they're in fourth place in the NL West, 21 games back, and also seven and a half games back of the final wildcard spot with only 29 games left. With $255 million going into this star-studded team, a losing season's just unacceptable and it has a lot of us wondering how this team has been this bad all season. So let's look at why the Padres have massively underperformed this season, and we can point to two main reasons why they've struggled the way that they have, and then we have to answer the question, how does this affect them going forwards? Because going into next season, their goal is still going to be to try to win a World Series. And as we get into this, please go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and turn on notifications to let me know you're enjoying the content and to make sure that you don't miss out on any more baseball videos like this one. With Manny Machado, Xander Bogarts, and Fernando Tatis Jr. all set to make over $20 million a year for the next 10 plus years, and Juan Soto looking to join this group too, this lineup was set to be one of the best in baseball, but they haven't been able to live up to that hype yet. Now, this offense hasn't been bad. In fact, they've been anywhere from average to good. 15th in runs, 16th in OPS, and 10th in WRC+. But this just isn't what Padres fans were hoping for from this group. And there's been one main issue that's held this offense back. These guys take really good at-bats. They hit their fair share of homers. But it's the oldest part of hitting, and something that often gets overlooked in today's age of analytics, that's been costing this lineup so much. And that's simply their batting average, where the Padres have been 24th in the league. Nowadays, batting average often gets skipped over when people look at a hitter's stats. I know I've been guilty of this myself, but base hits still have a part in baseball, even with the focus today shifting to the three true outcomes of walks, homers, and strikeouts. Now, the reason that batting average is getting left behind is because there's a lot that goes into a hitter's average that's way outside of his control, like where the defense is, how good the defenders are, and whether the scorekeeper can even tell the difference between a hit or an error. And we know that not every hit is created equal. But there's still a couple things that go into a player having either a good or a bad batting average that tells us a lot about them and how much they're helping out their team, sometimes in ways that we don't really think about. To be able to have a high batting average and get a lot of hits, you need to put the ball in play consistently and you need to make quality contact consistently. So when we look at the Padres, their hitters take really good at bats that help them make contact more often than most teams in the league. And even if you don't wind up getting a hit, there's a lot of times where putting the ball in play puts you in a better position to score runs. But this comes down to how you're hitting the ball. And what the Padres haven't done well this year is put the ball in play how we're all taught as kids. And that's to just try to hit a line drive. Across the league in 2023, there's been a 706 batting average on line drives, but the Padres have been 29th in line drive percentage this year. Instead, selling out on fly balls, where you do get most of your slugging from, but you drop the average on those down to 231. Look, hitting fly balls is great when in certain spots you need to advance a runner from like second or third, when those drop in for extra bases, or preferably when they just leave the yard. But there are plenty of times throughout a game where you just need a line drive to drop in, or even a well-placed grounder to move a runner over to get him home with two outs. So there's a time and place to try to hit a fly ball as either a sack fly or to try to launch one, but it becomes a problem when that's what you're trying to do most of the time. So when we look at the Padres lineup and first starting with the heart of the order here, Fernando Tatis Jr. is hitting 262, Juan Soto is hitting 260, Xander Bogarts 257, and Manny Machado 249, all above or equal to the MLB average this season. But out of 137 qualified hitters, Tatis is ranked 64th, Soto 68th, so close, Bogarts 
Hearts is 79th, and Machado is 98th. Now again, none of them are having a bad season by any means. They've all hit at least between 15 and 25 home runs, and they're all above average hitters according to WRC+, with Soto's up at 145, but you need the middle of your order doing more to produce runs than either getting walked or hitting home runs. Sometimes you just need them to put it in play and get the job done instead of trying to break the game open with a bomb. And then when we look at the rest of the lineup, you've had Trent Grisham hitting 201 in 128 games, Jake Cronenworth has hit 229 in 127 games, and Matt Carpenter, Gary Sanchez, and Rognit Odor have hit 177, 216, 203 respectively as some of your role players. You need your lineup to be able to do more than hope for a home run when they make contact, or you're not going to score runs consistently. Yeah, you'll drop 10 on somebody here and there when you do have a game where you hit a couple bombs and manage to have a couple hits drop in, but there's also going to be a lot more games where you maybe get one run across. A really good home run season is what, 40 homers in a year? So that's only one out of every four games. What is a hitter giving you in those other three then if he's not hitting a home run? And yeah, Walks are great, I preach about that all the time. It's a 100% way to get onto first base, but it's not gonna move guys around unless they're directly in front of you, so you need to be able to do more with the bat than just get walks and just hit home runs. You've gotta put the ball in play, get some base hits, get something moving on the base paths. So to be a more well-balanced lineup, you need guys to get on base and move around a little bit and set the table for the middle of the order to drive them in. Otherwise, you're just playing roulette basically, waiting for a home run at the perfect moment or four home runs in one game. But then even when the Padres do manage to get late into a close game because the offense did score enough, and this rotation that's been fourth in ERA and sixth in F4 did its job, then they have to rely on the bullpen to finish the job. And this brings us to San Diego's second problem. The bullpen has been 13th in ERA, so they haven't been giving up too many runs, but they haven't been pitching as well as this might suggest, with their FIP 20th, F4 21st, and Sierra 22nd. And this is because while they've managed to keep too many runs from crossing the plate, their game plan for how they're gonna attack hitters has not been great. The first pitching advice that we all have burned into our memories is that you need to throw strikes because good hitters aren't going to chase out of the zone. So as a pitcher, you put yourself behind in counts, which lets hitters be more selective and look for their pitch to drive, or they're just gonna take their free base. So if you're gonna be out of the zone more often, where the Padres bullpen has been 21st in zone percentage, then you have to get hitters to expand the zone. And these relievers have been about average in getting chases, but they're not getting a lot of whiffs on those chases, which means that you're probably getting more weak contact because those pitches are tougher to hit out of the zone, but you're not able to put hitters away and take out any chance of them getting on base or making something happen. So if you're not throwing a lot of strikes to begin with, and then when you do get hitters to expand the zone, you're not able to put them away, you're probably giving up quite a few walks where the Padres bullpen has been 20th and you're not getting strikeouts where they've been 21st. So not only are you making it tougher on yourself by putting guys on first and not giving your defense a chance to make a play behind you, which the Padres do have a really good defense, but then you're also making them work more by having to make a play on all these balls that are getting put in play against you. And they have runners moving now when they're trying to do that. And almost every guy in this bullpen has struggled with one, if not both of these. Even starting with the closer, Josh Hader, who's been outstanding with a 116 ERA, 239 FIP, and 296 Sierra, but his 13.2% walk rate is well above average, 159th out of 169th qualified relievers this season. So even with how dominant he's been at keeping hitters from even touching him, let alone taking him deep, if you give up a couple walks to start an inning, then all it takes is one hit to get a run in, let alone a home run completely flips a close game at that point. Then you have Steven Wilson, who's also been walking guys a ton, Tim Hill has barely been striking anyone out, and both Luis Garcia and Tom Cosgrove have been below average at both. 
Counting Hater, then, that's five of your top six most used relievers that are still on this team. When basically your entire bullpen is either putting unnecessary stress on the defense with free base runners, or they can't put guys away without that defense's help, then you're putting a lot on these guys' plates at the end of a game when they're not fresh anymore. So we have an offense that's been overly reliant on getting extra base hits on fly balls, and a bullpen that hasn't had the best approach to attacking hitters, both big parts of their disappointing season this year. But what does this mean for this team going into next season? First, let's talk about the hitting. And this lineup's low average from a lot of fly balls can be for one of two reasons. The first is that this is the approach that the organization and the coaching staff is preaching to these guys. And it's the mindset that they have at the plate, which if this is the case, then it comes down to, like I said earlier, picking your spots more for when you look to get something in the air or swing for the fences. Situations like when you're ahead in the count or you need a sack fly, but there are plenty of situations where you really don't want to try to lift the ball. The other reason for this would be mechanical, and that most of these hitters, like a lot of these guys have recently, have focused on raising their launch angle and hitting more balls in the air, which if you can change your mechanics to raise your launch angle, you can bring it back down too. Because yes, you do want to hit the ball in the air, but there's a point where you go past barreling it up and driving it in the air, and instead you just start popping it up way too much. And all of your main hitters here in Tatis, Soto, Bogarts, and Machado are all below their career batting average this season, with Tatis being the only one that isn't also below his career line drive percentage. So these guys should all be able to bounce back and return to form, whether this is just some bad luck or maybe something to change with their mechanics a little bit. And then maybe on top of this, you look to get some higher batting average guys in the offseason to replace some of these role players that haven't really been able to do that this season. And then for the bullpen, this again could be an organizational thing where these are just the kind of pitchers that they like or it's how they set their game plans. But some of these pitchers and mainly the guys that struggle with walks, they just are what they are. Josh Hader has always been a high walk guy, but he's usually been able to get away with this, at least until last year when he wasn't, because he can do everything else so well that it kind of covers up this weakness. So you have to bank on the fact that he can still do that, or we've seen what could happen. Wilson has also been a high walk guy over his two seasons, so basically the same thing here as with Josh Hader. Garcia was good with both his strikeouts and his walks the last two seasons, so maybe then this season, that's his age 36 season, is a sign of age starting to kind of catch up with him here a bit. Hill has leaned more and more into being a pitch to contact, high ground ball guy, which isn't a bad thing at all. And Cosgrove is only a rookie, so there's still time to improve, but he was a higher walk guy at the upper levels of the minors. Now, Hader and Garcia are both free agents this offseason, so you could look to get some different guys in there, or if it's more about the game plan that these guys have, maybe they need to decide to go at hitters more instead of trying to stay out of the zone and hope that hitters expand. The Padres' window for competing should still be open headed into next season, so this offseason is going to be huge for both the players and the organization. The players are going to have to make adjustments and figure out what didn't work for them this year and how they can fix that and the organization needs to figure out how to put the best team possible around the guys that are coming back, starting with what they're going to do about Blake Snell and Josh Hader both hitting free agency. 2023 did not go their way, and if the Padres want to avoid this kind of disappointing season again in 2024, this offseason is going to be how they do it. So now comment below, what do you think about all this? What other problems have you seen holding the Padres back this season? And what do they have to do to put themselves in a position to be World Series contenders next year? And if you made it this far, again, I would really appreciate if you'd like the video, subscribe, and turn on notifications. It helps the channel out a bunch, but more importantly, you get to see more baseball content like this every time we drop a new video. And if you'd like to help support the channel, you can check out our merch store. Link is down in the description. Or you can check out our most recent video on the Mariners' incredible run that saved their season and put them back at the top of the AL West. As always, thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day. Later.